Welcome back. I'm Jasmine Katami, and with me is Francesco Cetraro. Is that right? Very well, yeah. And I believe he brought the most interesting and funny title of the of the session of the sessions. Mm. Do you want a mobile with that? Normally, I'm asked um, uh, if I'm getting a coffee. Do you want a muffin with that? Yes. So, what will you be talking about today? W we're talking about obviously the uh, growth of mobile phones, how people are using them more and more to look for services around them, and uh, what opportunities there are for hosting companies to, yes? Oh, ah, okay, sorry, no, I thought she was already asking a question. No. Um, she will, she will later. She will, okay. <laughs> um, so what kind of opportunities there are for hosting companies to, to tap into this opportunity and uh, maybe make some money out of it? So that's, that's the objective. Uh, I, c I can answer that question already. I want a mobile with that, so go ahead. Thank yes. you. So this thing works? No, it doesn't. How do I... Or is it... Yes, excellent. So, um, just small presentation. First of all, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to be here with me today. And uh, I hope uh, this will give you some inspiration on uh, interesting things that are happening also in the, uh, in the mobile space. And as I mentioned, um, give you some ideas on how you can basically use this opportunity to make some, uh, some money. Um, just a bit of introduction. Uh, my name is Francesco and I um, do business development for uh, Affilias, which some of you might know uh, first and foremost as one of the largest registry operators for uh, top-level domain names. Uh, so you've probably been to quite a few sessions on new top-level domains. We're very involved in that space uh, ourselves. Uh, but obviously we've been running um, top-level domain names for many years. We are the .info registry, uh, .pro, we do the backend for .org, um, and a bunch of new TLDs coming up. Um, one of the TLDs, obviously, we run is the .mobi registry, uh, which has been in the market since 2006, and uh, it's doing very well. It's over a million domain names registered. Um, through that business, obviously, we got very much in contact with how mobile was developing through years, and we realized that there was a need to um, to do some more uh, to help people really make the best of that opportunity. So we got more and more involved in the, in the software business as well, uh, beyond domain names. Um, so we have a couple of very interesting uh, products out on the market at the moment. One of them is uh, Device Atlas, uh, which is basically the biggest database of uh, mobile phones in the market uh, with prob over 150 properties for each mobile device. And we have customers like American Express, Sprint, uh, Hennes & Mauritz, uh, uh, many ad networks using the Vice Atlas to recognize the phone that the customers have in their hands and provide the best possible experience on that device, uh, adapt, provide also ads specifically for, for those uh, mobile devices to basically increase their conversion rates. GoMobi is our mobile site builder, um, which is kind of the, the main topic of today's um, talk. Uh, but we also run a couple of interesting resources. If you're interested in mobile marketing, Mobi Thinking is a very nice website with a lot of white papers, interviews with uh, uh, the people who are really leading the mobile revolution. And uh, Mobi Forge is a, is a community for mobile developers, as I think the largest independent mobile um, web community for, uh, for mobile developers where you can go and ask questions about anything from HTML5 to uh, uh, yeah, WAP, if you're still into that, that kind of thing. So, so we do have quite a big expertise in, this, uh, uh, in the mobile space as well. Um, so we've probably seen many of my colleagues at Mobile World Congress, if you guys go there, and, and so on. I don't have probably to tell you that mobile is, is very big. Um, I was if, oh, at least the boys, if you've been to the toilet downstairs, you've seen the, uh, the ads from Logaholics. One of them said that there are more people with access to a mobile phone than to a, to a toilet. Um, yeah, you've seen that. Even the, girl, even the girls have seen it. So, I mean, obviously I could throw all kind of um, statistics at you, but the reality is that obviously it's, it's, it's around us, even yourselves as maybe more technically savvy, but even, I mean, even my mom is doing that. So clearly we are at a point where they are very much part of everybody's life and we really use them to find services and interesting things around us. Um, so they're not longer something just for geeks, but everybody's, you know, um, really making the best of this opportunity. From a business perspective, so from your customer's perspective, um, what this means is obviously there is a push into kind of going into that space, really using mobile to make money. Um, I was talking with somebody yesterday about the fact that Domino's Pizza 
Uh, in Ireland, for instance, uh, they have the mobile app and they're getting a lot more of their sales through the mobile uh, than, than people walking into the shop. So there is a lot of um, drive into the convenience of just being able to pull out the phone and, and do stuff like that, like order services or order products. Um, so there is, there is, it's undeniable that the businesses are looking for a way to use mobile to drive business. Um, so the question is whether like, you're able to help them, whether you're kind of there uh, to, to take that, that, uh, the position of that advisor that provides them the right solution, or whether somebody else is going to do it. So the market is there. The question is very much um, who's going to fulfill that, uh, um, that need. Um, and I want to make clear that, that my idea with this presentation is very much not to do a talk about technology, about what is better, whether iPhone, Android, whatever. It's very much about a commercial uh, approach, of what is right for your customers, and, and, and incidentally, what, what you can do to kind of um, address that, that need. A big question, I mean, as a hoster, obviously, your customers, they come to you, they buy domain names, they buy cloud services, they buy email. The big question is, why do they do that? Let me assure you, it's not because they think it's cool like we do. Um, I know a lot of people that would rather kind of lose a kidney than go through another go at the um, uh, checkout process. Uh, but they do it because obviously they, they, there is a reason for their business to be there uh, online. And the simple answer to that, again, is not about the fact that it's very cool to have a website. It's because their customers are there, right? So, so they want, obviously, to have the best opportunity to present their business to these customers. Um, to have a shot at basically like driving their, their business forward and, and making more money out of that. So what, what you're doing, the service you're providing today, they're, they're, they're a tool, but they mean, they're mean to, to an end. And the end is obviously growing their business and making more money. So ultimately, it's what, whatever makes sense from that perspective, whatever drives the more traffic uh, to their actual shop, their location, that's what they're going to do, right? That's why they do Facebook pages today and all that, because the customers are there. So from that perspective, think about it. Now, take, take a step back. Um, it's all kind of a continuum and evolution that goes on. Back in the days before the internet, uh, running a successful business was about being in the right spot, right? So location, 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 right? If you have the best stall in the center of the market, that's where most people will walk. So they're most likely coming and buying your, um, your, um, your products, right? The negative fact, with the negative aspect with that is obviously that, that you're kind of stuck uh, in your specific location. So even if you run a very successful business in, say, Frankfurt, you're stuck with just the customers from the Frankfurt area. If on the other side, as a customer, you live in a place like Roost, there might be other challenges in maybe getting the, the stuff you really want, right? Um, I remember myself growing up in a small town and being a heavy metal fan. It was hard to get the right CDs and all that. Then the internet came, and it was amazing because you had suddenly access to all sorts of products that could be delivered to your door. Um, so it was, it was great. It doesn't matter if you live in Rust or in Frankfurt. The whole world is at your, your fingertip, very much. The problem was, obviously, the moment you left the house, you didn't have the computer anymore, you were back into that world of not knowing where, I don't know, looking for cigarettes uh, at uh, 10 in the evening and going around 15 blocks just to realize that the cigarette shop was right behind you and uh, you just walked around, right? From that perspective, mobile is amazing because that kind of brings those two worlds more closely together, right? You can just pull out the phone and find out that the cash machine is there, the, the cigarette shop is there, and, and really kind of bring uh, the demand uh, from the consumer closer to the offer, right? Um, one interesting aspect is obviously what that means is that when you look at statistics from search, this is all stuff that comes from Google. Google runs a very amazing a uh, website called Our Mobile Planet, where you can go and make your own graphics. Uh, you can kind of uh, see trends and stuff. It's amazing that obviously most, like a big chunk of search done on mobile has to do with what's around me right now, right? I'm here, where can I go for, for a pizza? Where, where is there an open brewery, the, the beer place where I can go um, have uh, a nice beer? So there is very much that, that approach that, that on mobile, uh, we're on desktop, we're kind of searching in general for, I don't know, where I'm going for vacation next time and so on. On mobile, is very much about the need we have right now. And the other amazing thing is obviously because it's about needs that we have right now is that those searches result much more often into an action. Uh, very, like half of the time, there is actually an action taken as a result of that search within an hour. 
to like, so, so the idea very much is that you basically have a customer with the cash in their hand looking for somewhere to go and spend it, right? Um, and obviously mobile is helping kind of bring in that customer and his money straight to your door. So it looks like a pretty nice picture, right? We're bringing closer the online and the offline world. Everybody's happy. Uh, the customers are getting what they want. Your customer, your b the, the small and medium businesses are getting more money and all that, right? Looks pretty, pretty cool, right? Except that's not reality. That's what reality looks like. The reality is that because we're not optimizing the, 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 web, the, the, the business's web presence for this type of users, um, we're actually making these customers, who, I repeat, they're going there with the cash in their hand, ready to spend. We're making them work and sweat to be able to spend that money, right? And it's all about now, for instance, uh, you probably come across it yourself. You search for a restaurant, the restaurant is using Flash, um, which if you are an iPhone user, you know pretty much is as, as good as not having the website at all. Um, which I find pretty amazing because, as we said, that trend is there. There is very much that, that, that direction in, uh, in kind of people using mobile to find cool services around them, and then we're kind of making it very difficult for them um, to spend that money. This is what the typical mobile experience looks like. We're kind of forcing them to, go, to look through a small keyhole. Um, and it, let's face it, even if you have a smartphone and you're able to load a full website, it's not very practical to have to pinch and zoom and maybe look where is the address, uh, is the menu, and then if, if it's a restaurant, many, re many restaurants have the menu in PDF that you have to download, and if you're on a slow connection or non-working Wi-Fi, uh, like here sometimes, then you're pretty much stuck with that, right? So, so the situation there is very much that we're making it very, very, very difficult for these people to, um, to, to do business with us. And again, I mean, more, more statistics about the fact that it is actually important to, to cater to this kind of, of, of need and, and really do it in a way that, that kind of exploits the, the ability of the phone to maybe uh, give key information about the business. And the easier you make it for the user, the, the happier they will be and the more likely they will be to spend money with that. Um, so there is definitely like, there is a missed opportunity right now for a lot of businesses in not having a, a mobile presence. So what can we do about it? What can your customers, the small and medium business, do about it? You probably heard about many uh, approaches. Something that is very popular right now is, is called responsive design, um, which is a very interesting approach. It uses CSS and, and media queries to basically take the content of your desktop site and adapt it to the specific um, screen that the customer has. So if he has a tablet, you will, you will display certain type of information. If they have a phone, you'll display um, a smaller version of the website and kind of adapt um, with, with the type of device the customer has in their hand. Um, with the advantage, obviously, that you have one URL, one domain name uh, that works both on desktop and mobile. Another approach that many companies are taking is instead creating a, a dedicated mobile experience. So have, have a website that is specific for mobile users, which obviously needs to be on a separate domain name, but reality is that you can integrate device detection on the desktop website, and that will basically take the, the visitor from your desktop site to the mobile site if they come from mobile. So the, the visitor doesn't ever, ever need to know what the URL of the mobile website is. I'm not gonna spend too much time on mobile apps, um, simply because for small and medium businesses, the, the, the um, opportunity with the mobile app is very limited um, in the sense that, uh, I mean, let's face it, if you, if you visit a restaurant every now and then, you're not going to download the app. Um, first of all, you cannot search for an app on Google. So uh, a mobile website from that perspective is more uh, suitable for, for customer acquisition. Uh, the app is more for customer retention. So if you go to Starbucks a lot, you'll have their app for the convenience of, of saving the points. Um, and so on. So um, as I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on, on apps um, at this moment because I think for that specific type of customer, it's overkill, it's too expensive, it's not really what they need. Um, on responsive design, as I said, it's, it's a very great, um, very good approach, um, provided you do it right, uh, which means obviously it, it, it takes quite a lot of work to do it properly. You need to decide um, uh, basically for how many types of device you're going to cater, how many uh, viewpoints are you going to support. Because it's very easy to do it wrong, and when you do it wrong, all you're doing is basically you're dumping all your big desktop website on the mobile device, so you're forcing them to download a lot of data, 
which in, then in the, in the end they're not going to use because then they're going to just shrink and, and show some of the content. Um, an example, um, oh, okay, sorry, I uh, missed this slide on my own. <laughs> but uh, so, um, so the problem with, with responsive web design was exactly that um, uh, if you don't do it properly, it's actually backfiring at you because it's, it's just kind of stripping away um, content uh, that the, 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 the user is still downloading um, in the end. Um, so it's, it's slightly more complicated than just applying a nice uh, theme to WordPress um, and, and have it done. Um, here is some comparison. We did some, some tests on load times. Um, and some, some companies do it well, uh, like for instance Nokia. Um, even though they have a responsive web design, they do it very well because they recognize the, 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 the phone of the user and they really only send the data that is required for that usage. Cisco in, in turn is very bad. They just send all, all the data to all the, the, the devices and then they let the device uh, kind of decide what to display. So it's kind of um, um, a bad experience there. And then obviously you have a lot, still a lot of people using low-end devices. Um, which clearly um, represents a problem because they don't really support a lot of the JavaScript and all, uh, a lot of the stuff that, that the responsive web design um, uses. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, the, the difference between somebody that does it right uh, and, and somebody who does it wrong, Cisco, you can, you can see it on, on your phones yourselves and, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, my point here is that particularly for the small and medium business who doesn't have the kind of, of budget that, that developing a good responsive design would require, um, it's probably better to, to kind of maybe look at, at something dedicated. The big question is always why are you making the website? What is your objective with, with the online presence, right? If you're, if you're in the content business, so if, if your website itself is your product, then yes, you want to spend money on, on making it as pretty and as functional as possible. And then, yes, I would also recommend spending money on responsive web design. But if your objective with the website is driving customers to your physical location, then maybe something more in, in, in that direction is probably more effective. And again, it's about the, the return on investment, is how much you spend and how much you get back out of this investment that makes the difference. And instead, many times, it's all about the web designer saying, oh, if I heard about this kind of new technology, I'll throw it on the website because uh, then I can, I can brag about it with my friends. Um, the, uh, the reality there is that who decides what the website should do is, is the business owner, not the web designer, um, and it's a very important point that, that you should make to, you, to your customers. Here is an example of what we do um, with GoMobi, our uh, mobile site builder. We took this, the, the, um, the direction of dedicated uh, mobile web presence. Um, my, what I always tell uh, my resellers about that is my objective with GoMobi is let the visitor spend as little time as possible on the website. The website is, is um, uh, is a tool that allows them to say, um, find these, uh, this location. This is a very nice restaurant in Dublin, by the way, where we're based. So if you're ever there, very nice pizza, save it, Manifesto Restaurant. They actually, um, they're actually an interesting story with these guys uh, about what I was telling before, that the need for mobile uh, solution, web solution is out there, and the question whether you or somebody else is going to tap into that, that need. When I met uh, the owner of this restaurant, they were using the services of, of a menu uh, pages aggregator in Ireland, so not, not a typical hosting company. Um, and this menu aggregator that basically sold them a website package for which they were paying like 100 euros a month, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It wasn't, it wasn't an HTML site, it was a whole big XML file that was kind of rendering different pages. Weird. And, and the problem was that obviously they were invisible on Google and all that, but they didn't know better, so they were paying the 100 euros a month uh, for something that was just not working for their business. It was just ticking the box. Do you have a website? Yes, we do, but is it really doing it, anything for you? Um, and I think a lot of businesses end up in the hands of, of this type of service providers that are kind of selling them weird stuff, and they don't know, so they, they'll pay for it. Um, and I think it's important to realize that they always, they sometimes come to you for, for advice and then it's important that, that you are there and you can provide expertise on that, right? Um, the idea is very much is that with, with, with GoMobi we want to say, for instance, there is an icon for click to call. So you click and the phone call starts. I don't have to go and look for the phone number and then copy it and paste it. Uh, the phones come with GPS nowadays, so if you're not familiar with the CD, you click on an icon, it'll tell you how to get there. Um, so as I said, very much 
as little time as possible on the website, as more time as possible in the restaurant or wherever the, the business owner is, um, is located, and basically really much return on investment, make it, kind of make it work for them. So just to summarize, um, again, it's not about your personal preference as, as a technology geek, whether you like responsive design, whether you like apps, whether you're an iPhone geek or Android or whatever. It's about what is right for your customers. Um, so obviously, the, the, the first obvious re thing is that as a hoster, when somebody has a website that is responsive, they're not paying you more for that. So there is a missed opportunity for revenue there. Uh, that you can take advantage if you have a dedicated um, mobile offering, right? Um, as I said, there is, there is a lot of interest from small and medium businesses. So if you put it is as a package of, of service specifically for that type of, 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 of businesses, there is a very high um, chance they'll pick it up um, together with, with other services. Um, Specifically, GoMobi, it's a very simple software as a service kind of product. So there is a, there's an API that takes very little to, uh, to integrate. Uh, the cost is very low. If you look on the market, you'll find it from 50 euros uh, a year um, upwards. Obviously, there is a difference between offering it as a do-it-yourself kind of product. Many resellers do, kind of, they do it for the customer. Obviously, they can charge a lot more. Uh, one of our most successful resellers is actually Yellow Pages company in the US. They do a basic site for the customer, and because of that, they charge 300 euros. And the site works, so the customer is happy to pay you that, because the moment they start getting reservations through the site, they see that return on the investment coming through. It's working. Uh, it's making me more money than I'm paying for it. Obviously, there are other mobile site builders on the market, uh, so I absolutely urge you to take a look around. At the same time, we have been the most successful in that space. Most many very big hosting companies have picked us after looking at, at other uh, players in the market. So clearly, we must be doing something right. Um, so we have uh, from Endurance Group in the US, um, one on one, Arsis selling the service. Uh, also, as I said, Yellow Pages companies, um, telcos with Telecom Italia going live uh, these days. So it's, it's, it's actually there is a growing interest for these type of solutions. Regardless of what solution you get, my suggestion if you start offering mobile services is that obviously you have access to your logs, so take a look. A lot of your customers will have a lot of mobile traffic, so they're experiencing the pain, whether they know it or not, the pain of the fact that their visitors are getting a bad mobile experience and potentially going to a competitor. Um, so those are probably the first customer you want to address uh, with this type of offering. Um, with GoMobi, we found out that offering a free trial helps a lot the transition and, and kind of helping them test it. And when they test it many times, they'll, they'll keep the service because they realize it, it really does work. Um, important thing as well, some of our most successful resellers have integrated the uh, automatic device detection on the, uh, on the customer's desktop side. So they, um, we offer this, this code for free in many languages like JavaScript, uh, HD access if you're on Apache. So they, they just throw it in the customer's um, server automatically so that if I go to their desktop uh, domain with my mobile phone, I'm getting redirected to the mobile website automatically, which obviously means all the URLs they printed on their, on their uh, paper advertising, also their Google ranking automatically works for mobile as well. And we also found out that even though we built Comobi with, with a non-technical user in mind, designers and developers are picking it up uh, very easily because their customers are asking for a mobile um, solution and, the, um, and they might not be ready to pay several thousand euros for, for a dedicated solution or, or again, to do a proper responsive web design uh, kind of setup. But if, if the designer can do it in 10 minutes and charge them maybe three, 400 euros, they'll, they'll pay it happily. So we have quite a lot of web agencies using GoMobi to deliver a effective but, but uh, cost ef or effective and cost effective mobile solution to their customers. So that's all I have. I don't know. If any questions? If you obviously we had a booth, but clearly the, my colleagues are gone by now, thanks to Lufthansa. Um, but yeah, you're more than welcome to visit gomobi.info. There you can see videos, more material about the product. You can try it for free. And if you're interested, just drop me an email. Be happy to um, kind of guide you through the process and help you out. Sell on mobile. Thank you, Francesco. I see someone being very nervous right in the first row. You have would a Lufthansa flight too? Or what, <laughs> what's the Do you have a Lufthansa flight too? Uh, would you share your name with us and uh, what is your specific interest? Yeah. 
My name is Alexander from Proliatis. Uh, I just picked up a copy from your booth, but oh, the guys good. ran well. <laughs> We're gone, unfortunately. Um, so I have a question. Um, as you already mentioned, Device Atlas is probably the most interesting product in your range. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a few questions to help understand the service. It's, it's a piece of code I integrate into my website, and it, it offers me information about the device, the carrier, and Okay, there are, there are two different levels. So GoMob itself uses just one property in Device Atlas, which is whether it's mobile or not, and then kind of adapts the device. So Screen. Device Atlas itself is a database with, as I said, 12,000 different mobile devices. And for each device, we have 150 different properties, everything from the screen size to um, yeah, whether it, what type of video it supports. We have agreements with, with companies that deal with GSMA, for instance, so we know, I can tell you, for instance, whether your customer's phone is on Wi-Fi or on GPRS. Um, I can tell you a lot of information about that. So that's more of an enterprise kind of product that we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars uh, license a year. Yeah, and there you're... Eh? You offer a cloud service. We do offer a cloud service, but obviously, like say, the ad network uses, uh, they, have, they can install it on premises because there you can do up to a couple of million queries a second. So depending on the type of need you have, we have different licenses for device atlas. But yes, um, Gomobi uses that data to format the website, but the stuff you can do with the intelligent device, it kind of depends on the, on the type of applications you're, you're building. You're probably doing more kind of advanced stuff. Yeah, just detecting the capabilities, especially the media and audio capabilities. Yes. So um, that, that's that's device atlas itself. No, Gomobi uses yeah. that, but you don't. It's not exposed to you as a as a designer. Let's say. Um, how often do you update the database uh, for new devices like Google Chromecast, Roku devices? It's it, new it's smart TVs and it's so on. fairly ongoing. We do have partnership with m some mobile operators as well and, and device manufacturers, so we get the data directly from, from the original source. Uh, we obviously have quite a lot of customers who kind of... It changes so fast. Yeah, so, so, you, so the, the, it's, it's continuous. We, we're, it's always kind of very up-to-date. Uh, you as a customer on the enterprise license, you can have your own. Edit, so you can add, if there are something that are more interesting to you, you can have your own private uh, extra database on top of Device Atlas. There is a lot of things you can do there. For instance, one of the, the verticals that has been very keen on adopting the Device Atlas is the real-time bidding uh, ad networks, because obviously their speed and accuracy is key. Um, again, it, it's very flexible. It, it's more raw data, so then you obviously need to know how to use the data, uh, but you can do a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else who would like to ask something or maybe share a thought? Okay, well then, um, I, I have a question. Um, mm. Let's say I'm not like a big enterprise, but I'm a um, small or mid-sized company. Mm. Uh, let's say I'm that restaurant, okay? Uh, can we talk about money? How much does this cost, what you, what you offer? Well, uh, as I said, we have a, a broad range of, of resellers in the market. Uh, so if you go to kind of more do-it-yourself kind of holsters, it's, uh, you find it on the market from, from $50, $60 upwards a year. Um, and you can use it with any domain name you want. That's, that's an important thing to say. Just because we are the .mobi registry, there is no obligation to use it on the mobi domain name. A lot of people do mdot and so on. So uh, we, we work with a lot of different type of hosting companies. Some of them do the dedicated service. They do it for you. Then obviously the cost is probably a few hundred dollars. But ultimately, it's always a, a very small investment compared to what most businesses would spend on a website and an online presence, online marketing and all that. So it's definitely the objective is to keep it simple and, and accessible for all types of businesses. Okay. And um, how would you publish sites? Um, so it, there is, it's all kind of hosted on the cloud, um, to use a buzzword everybody loves here. Um, and so the, 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 the site, the, there is kind of a site builder that, kind of a control panel that resellers can integrate as an iframe or as a pop-up in their own interface. So the customer never leaves the hoster's um, interface. And it's available in many languages. We have everything from German, French, Spanish, Italian, Russian, Chinese, uh, and Japanese and all that. And all they do is they go to the, to, the, to the wizard there, they can... The wizard is able to either import content from an existing desktop website, uh, or you can build a standalone mobile website. Uh, so total flexibility there. Um, we have, as I said, some resellers that use their, the data they already have from the customer to pre-build the website, so the customer never actually have to see 
the, the setup assistant. It's, it's quite flexible, but as I said, we also try to keep it very, very simple. So it's really just going through a wizard, answering questions, and the site is up. Sounds easy. So who would be the, let's say, um, ideal candidate of a new client for you, if you could you know, create that person, that company, that enterprise yourself? So a, as a reseller or as a hand customer? Take both. OK, so as a reseller, I think reality is that um, we see that the ones who are most successful right now are the ones who do a bit more of a kind of hand-holding kind of service for hand customers. Um, it's still, for the small and medium business owner, it's still early days, so they're not necessarily going and picking it themselves. Uh, somebody does it for them, they're more than happy to pay the a premium price on that. Uh, so there's definitely, that's why we're working a lot with kind of Yellow Pages companies, but also telcos. Uh, anybody who has even a web design uh, um, kind of department or works a lot with web designers uh, can, can definitely make a lot of uh, good business with, with GoMobi from that perspective. So, and yeah, any business from a business, any business that deals with uh, the kind of restaurants, all sorts of services. The typical thing that you can think you're looking yourself on a mobile phone, uh, those are the guys you need to go and talk to and tell them you need, it's time to get a mobile website. Okay, well then, if uh, there is no one else who would like to ask or share something with us, I would like to leave it here because we're kind of running out of time. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, are you? No, 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 don't be I'm, sorry. I'm around. Where, where I was just about to ask you, since uh, you're probably not at the booth anymore either, yeah. where can the people find you if they would like to talk to you one-to-one? -to -one? Well, you can obviously shoot me an email. I'm around. Uh, later today, I'll be in front of the stage when Venga Boys are on there, so you're welcome to come there. And okay. Well, I, I know somebody spread the rumor that, that I was kind of skipping the presentation and we were practicing playing YouTube videos. <laughs> so if you came because you heard that rumor, I apologize. It's like bad marketing from my perspective. No, I think you did quite well today. <laughs> Give him a hand, please. Thank you.